A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester. Where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quickenden. This is the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shem Rock. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous. This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. And the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it! Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester. Giovanni Melillo a Marek Mazuch. Těžká bitva strojů na nokauty, která nejspíš nedojde do finiše, ale také souboj o navrácení sebevědomí. Italský řebec Melillo je rozený striker. Co 14 výher má 11 ukončení. Jenže v oktagonu má zatím dvě prohry. S penězem sice jako jediný vydržel všechna tři kola a prohrál až na body. Nicméně v tanečku s Čepem se dostal do jeho mlínu a padl už prvním kole. Oh! A je konec! Vlastně potom znovu dokázal. Bývalý slovenský profesionální voják Marek Mazu měl do roku 2019 skóre 5-0. Z jeho granátů jde respekt. V boxerském zápase dokonce uspal a pola silu. Jakmile se ale začal naplno věnovat MMA, paradoxně přišly dvě prohry v prvním kole. Na Octagonu 35 ho uškrtil Bueno a o tři měsíce později přišel tvrdý knockout od Matava. Oh, oh, Mazuk jde k zemi. A to je konec. Jedno je jisté. Ve vítězi této bitvy se znovu rozhoří oheň. Zatímco třetí prohra v řadě bude pro jednoho z bojovníků velký psychický kámen. So here we go. If ever walkout music fitted a man and his demeanor, it is this one, Marek Mazuk. The KO artist hailing from Slovakia. Listen to the roar, the applause he gets, but look at the focus in his eyes, Luke. He is coming in on the back of a two-fight losing streak, but my goodness, his last fight, he stepped in on less than 24 hours notice to fight Al Matavau. After that, he said, look, I got to either decide whether I step away from the game or I step straight back in there and try and get back in the win column. He's working with the likes of Martin Boudet, the UFC fighter. He's got Radha Manuska, one of his best friends and training partners in there. They went straight back into camp. They let him recover from the, the, the head trauma, but met, they were seeing how physically he was. And they say he really is in the shape of his life. They could have held him back and pushed for a later date, but they reckon right here, right now, with the focus and the fire in his belly, they're going to release the monster once again. Yeah, an ex-professional soldier, and you can see the intention in his eyes as he walks towards the obstacle cage. You know, a born killer, this guy, and when he gets in there, he's deadly. Absolute knockout specialist. And I heard Andre Novotny made him laugh. He made him smile, oh, which okay. is, yeah. Which is as good which, as the yeah, laugh. It, yeah, I've never even seen the man blink, so uh, <laughs> I'm sure Novotny will be happy with that. Mazouk inside the cage. Now let's welcome Italy's Melillo. And here he comes, Gianni the Punisher Melillo. And you can hear the atmosphere in this arena change, right? Suddenly becomes slightly hostile towards this man looking to extend Mazouk's losing streak to three. 
And Melillo, he has been in there with the likes of Peñas. He was the first man to take Peñas to a decision. He then went toe to toe with Lasto Chepo, which many men, you know, you think that's the wrong recipe. He almost won that fight. He almost made the mistake of hurting Chepo because Chepo bit down on the mouthpiece, came back and got that finish. But speaking to Melillo in the hotel and looking at the shape he is in for this, there is a relaxed and even the walkout, there's a calm in his eyes, in his belly about this fight because it's stylistically, it's perfect for him. He's not going to have to look for Mazouk. He's not going to have to find a way to close that distance and try and, you know, use technique to get inside and let off that power. He's happy the man will walk into the middle. He's happy the man will cross that line and he will greet him with that punisher power that he possesses. Yeah, the man sporting a record of 14 and 8, but he's lost to all our big, big names that he's been in there with. He's four, some of the best fighters in the world. He's already mentioned Peñas and Chepo, but also taking on Michael Page. He took him on less than a week's notice yeah, as well. And he's gone in there and he's put on the performances and has some fantastic finishes. So this guy is dangerous in the, in the striking department, and we know that's how this is going to go, or we presume. We presume, we but, but I, we listen, know we, don't, we know nothing. We literally, to, we, we know presume. nothing. But if you're going to put the odds on how this will look, it's going to be a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, back and forth battle. This man as well, Melillo, the last man to beat, not just beat, but finish the German superstar, Christian Eckelin. So. Italy and Slovakia inside the cage. No touch the gloves as they went round there from Mazouk to yeah, his it opponent. Yeah, was heated at the weigh-ins as well. Melillo turning around and showing him the Punisher as we see the tail of the tape. Big number that jumps out is the age of the Punisher. Yeah. 38 taking on 27. Apart from that, everything is virtually identical. But look at the tip spot odds. In the favour of Gianni Melillo. The first time Mazouk has come in as the underdog. He doesn't look happy about it, Brian. He doesn't, he doesn't listen. Happy. I wouldn't want to be facing that guy. Let's get it underway. Let's hand it now to the one, the only, Andre Novotny. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest in middleway bout, scheduled for three five-minute rounds, and your referee in charge is Gert Richter. Let me introduce you, both fighters, and we will start in the blue corner. He's 27 years old, stands 183 centimeters tall, weighed in, at 84.1 kilo. Represent ground system Nitra and the coaches in his corner are Erik Kováč, Matuš Arpáš and Radovan Uškrt. He has a professional record of seven fights, five wins, four KO and two losses. Representing Neruda Cup team fit for you and fighting out of Slovakia in the blue corner, Marek Mazu. In the red corner, 38 years old, stands 182 centimeter tall, weight in 83.7 kilo. Represent Aurora MMA Roma, and the coach in his corner is Lorenzo Bargomeo. He has a professional record of 22 fights, 14 wins, 11 finishes, and 8 losses. Fighting out of Italy, Gianni the Punisher, Melillo. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Protect yourself at all times and listen to my commands. When I say stop, you stop. Fight hard, fight fair. Touch your gloves, please, and step back in your corner. They touch gloves. We are set and ready for this middleweight contest. Marek Mazouk in the blue corner, white shorts, taking on Gianni the Punisher Melillo. He is in the black shorts, red corner. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Luke Barnett here. Octagon 43. Off we go. Southpaw versus Orthodox. Instantly, Melillo trying to, sorry, Mazouk trying to close that distance. Melillo looking for the takedown. We yeah, would not expect that. I did say we, no, we don't know nothing. You don't know anything until they get in there. And Melillo pinning him up against the fence here. Well, Mazouk though with that right side underhook, swinging for the fences early on, missing both times. Melillo from the age of six, trained in judo, now a judo black belt. And again, this is a good game plan. Even if he doesn't get the takedown, you're forcing Mazouk to work. You're making him use those arms. You're getting lactic acid pumping through those muscles. So bit by bit, even if it's not you know, eye-catching stuff, you're wearing on what is a powerhouse in Mazouk. Yeah, exactly that, especially on that right side. He's having to elevate him, trying to get a little trip here. And that just shows the craftiness and maybe the experience from Melelo. Like we said, he's been in there with 
you know, some incredible names and some incredible fighters and has a much bigger record than Mazouk, but Mazouk is deadly once he can create some space and throw some shots. Referee good, Ricks up the third man in the cage. He might have his hands full here, but right now, Melilla still trying to work down, trying to pull that ankle away. Mazouk working really hard to stay on See his feet. See in his face as he goes for this cross face now as well. Goes back to the underhook, switches the hips. And Mazouk training with the likes of Radovanushka, also training with the, the heavyweight, the former Octagon heavyweight champion, Martin Boudet. And they speak very highly of him. And even though it's a, a huge gap, they do spar, they do do the rounds. Drops down here, does. Murillo maybe going to get this, oh. goes to the outside. Reeb can't quite get it. Good hips on display here from Mazouk. He's working so hard, though, for this. So Switches hard. to that single high crotch now. Looking to get lift up, maybe going to convert. Gets a good underhook, though. Nice work from Mazouk. Good, good head position as well. And the crowd now, you can hear Mazouk start to fill this arena. And we are pretty much full here now, Brian, as well. A couple of seats in the rafters missing, but we're not even at the main card yet. This uh, end to the prelims here. And this is the third time in 12 months we have filled this arena, 20,000 seats. And the last time we filled it, Luke, Mazouk took on Apollo Silver in a boxing match, became the first man ever to knock out Apollo Silver in a competitive bout. That is in all of his MMA fights, that is in all of his professional boxing fights. And Mazouk showed just what sort of power re and resilience after coming back after a very bad, bruised and battered first round to get that highlight real KO over uh, Apollo Silva. And is Mazouk going to be able to get away from this at the moment? Doing everything he can to create some space, but stifled again. Look at the referee, Mazouk. He's starting to get a bit of frustration here. Yeah, I think Gerrick uh, that feeling the same way. And maybe now create some space. Gets a frame across the throat. Looking maybe to bring the oh, knee up, gets it there. that's a good one, that connected. That connected, solid knee there. And manages to utilise that to get some space. And now, now they're they swinging. Swing. Oh, this is the fight we expected. Melillo, look at the change levels. Ooh. He's on wobbly legs, that knee, he still hurt, Luke. He right still hurt. Good wow. hips again for Mazouk. What? Manages to find the fence somehow. Yeah, I, no, I think he got caught with the right hand that with the, by the bicep. I think the right arm through the bicep in the back of the head and rocked. Wow. Lillo. But he manages to find a way to get him here, looking out to trip. Good hips again from Mazouk. One minute, 15 seconds left in this round. And again, that just shows the danger of Mazouk from one position. Basically, less than 30 seconds. Now the fans is going to understand why Lillo yeah. is doing what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. Because as soon as they break away, it's mayhem. And the crowd getting behind there, man. The referee, Gerd Richter, as well, asking for more. Now Very big shot from Melillo. Woo! Lands with that left hand. And looking tired up there as well, a little bit, Mazouk. Having the thought of these takedown attempts. This is, for me, what makes it a good game plan. It's not eye-catching. I know it's mayhem when they separate. But wearing down Mazouk is a good plan. 40 seconds left up in this first round. Mazouk on the hunt. That left hand cocked. Oh, nice jab. Big knee, though, there. Nice work. Changing it up. There's Melillo as he gets him back up against the fence. We need to see some more circling, some more footwork. You know, for Mazou to stay off the fence. He needs to have a better understanding of where he is in the cage and some lateral movement. He's so hungry for that headshot, though, Luke. That's all he thinks about. That's yeah. all he dreams of. Oh. Melillo does here as well. With nice knee coming up the center. Jump, Jump knee as well. Oh, Wait. nice little exchange. Return. Look at him walk his man down. Final seconds of round number one. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah. Looks frustrated a little bit with the fence. You can see Look that. at the back marks. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the grazing. Burn on the back yeah. from the grazing of the cage. That's all, much, all, much, all the forward pressure that Melillo's putting in. But you can, you can really understand why he's doing that, why he's, you know, he's trying to escape that boxing range because when you're in that boxing range with Mazouk any shot can put you out any shot and he's so confident that it only takes one shot walks his man down at the end of that round again great game plan from Melillo but you saw the glimpses of the danger that Mazouk can create in the mayhem in just you know a couple of exchanges this is the start talk us through this yeah, great hips here from Mazouk displayed some great takedown defense 
and that was what caused the stalemate. Here we see that knee that lands, and that gives him enough space to escape and throw these big shots. Here we might see if he lands that right. Oh, there's that right hand that lands that wobbles him. So now you can see Malillo's a little bit wobbled from that nice stiff jab. That right hand so far being the one that's finding a home. And pretty, pretty uh, even on the odds now. Set for round number two here. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Should we need it? Cage door about to close. Mazu in the blue corner. Melillo in the red. Off we go. And what does pressure Mazouk, nice and early stalking from Mazouk. And what does Mazouk have to do to avoid those clinches and those takedown attempts from Melillo? Needs to move in and out, not just go forward and throw those hooks, but nice movement there. You can see the change, control the distance and throw. Don't overreach, don't crowd your work, because we know what Melillo's trying to do now. Opening round was obvious that he's trying to look for a takedown, so he can't jump in. He see the adjustment he made there. He threw that left. He tried to follow up with a right, but he thought, nope, I'm not going to follow up because I don't want to get taken down. Oh! And he needs to make sure that he circles away from the fence a little bit better as well. And when you talk about his preparation for this, to come out of that first round, which is grueling, you know, his gas tank will have been worn, but looking so fresh, light on his feet, coming into round number two, it's yeah. a testament to that camp that he's had with Martin Boudet, with Radovanushka over at Ground Systems Nitro. And definitely dominating the space here early on, controlling the center of the cage. Nice little uppercut variation there, moves away, needs to be careful of that fence. Does Mazouk. Mazouk, six pro wins, four by finish, all by knockout. Gianni Melillo, 14 pro wins, nine knockouts, two submissions in there. Feels to me like Melillo's trying to use that space to catch some breath back. That, as grueling as it is for Mazouk to defend the takedowns, the amount of commitment you've got to have to hold a man like Mazouk against the cage, that's going to wear as well, right? Yeah, it almost seems to have like a bit of an open mouth as well. You don't want an open mouth with a guy like Mazouk throwing that, that sort of power at you. But he, at the moment, Melillo, the one that's popping in, popping out, landing good shots, winning in these striking exchanges. You can feel, I feel like the takedown attempts have taken the confidence away from oh, Mazouk, as I say, oh, the right lands hand. a big right hand, and again. Another one. Oh, my goodness. And so lands his man, gets the finish, and puts everyone on their feet here in the O2 Arena in Prague. And we said he's got the touch of death, one punch knockout power. And you see it there on display. Melillo back to his feet, but still visually in a lot of trouble. And Mazouk, again, not even, no emotion, not even a smile from the man after such an incredible finish and knockout there. Landed with one right hand, smelled blood, and went with an entourage of shots, landing over and over again to put his man's lights out. And listen, Luke, when you talk about fighting, a lot of people talk about it as, as physical. You talk about it a lot as mental. And Mazouk coming in off those two losses, those two bad finishes, particularly one against Al Matabal, he is still such a dangerous man. And you can see in his head, in his mind, you can tell that's the right team around him. He came in there with unwavering confidence in what he could do to Gianni Melillo. And I mean, if I could do that to a man, if I touched him with the right hand, I'd had unwavering confidence <laughs> as well. The, the, the touch of death. Mazouk, he just tapped him and it was all over. Un incredible stuff. And we can see again, I'll say it one more time, why Lillo was ha following that game plan and trying to negate the space and trying to put him, push him up against the fence. Because here, we just see him touch him with the right hand and it's all over. In the highlights here, that right oh, hand drops him. Right behind the ears. Smells well. the blood, comes in. One, two, three, four, oh, five, six, that's the one. seven. There Bob. you go. And he's out. And he is out, out. I'm proud you've learned to count to seven as well, Luke. It's big steps I mean, as I've, well I've for got you. two daughters, you know, so I've been, do, I've been doing the rounds. <laughs> We're doing it in Spanish as well. I could do it for that if you, if you would like me to. All the way to Siete, right? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, Let's no. go. Look at the numbers. A great fight between the two. Actually, the numbers are in the favor of Melillo, but the ones that count is the punches that led to that. 21 punches from Mazouk, 20 of them are significant. Boom. That's the accuracy that he possesses. I think it was 86% significant strike rate going into this fight. Well, look, both are ready for it to be announced. Let's hand it over Ladies to and gentlemen, the referee has called a stop to the action. At one minute, 53 seconds in the very first, uh, no, in the second round. And the winner, KO by punch, is Marek Mazu.
Thank you, Johnny Middle. Ale vítězem je Marek Mazuch. Marku, gratuluju moc. Chtěl jsem se... Chtěl jsem se pochlubit, že si se na mě usmál normálně, ukázal si zuby při tom úsměvu, což a teď to ukazuješ znovu, nevím, jestli takhle nekontrolovaně chceš projevovat svoje emoce dneska, ale evidentně ano. No, bylo už na čase vyhnat z toho strašáka zo skriny, jak hovoríš. Vidím, že to s tebou úplně mlátí vozem, to vítězství, ale takový ty prostě si, je to neuvěřitelné, že dokážeš takhle sebe kontrolovat ani v normálním životě, vlastně jako to nepustíš úplně, jako že by si lítal, vyskočil si na břevno, potěšil se s divákama. Oni by ti to dali zpátky. Já vím, ale jsem nějak vychovaný a jakože jdem nějakou cestou a tam jakože neexistuje odbočit. To neexistuje, že by si tamhle na to břevno teď vyskočil a zamával na lidi. Po, udělej to, pojď. No, tohle tě máma doma neučila, takhle se neslušně chovat. Ale když už si takovou zprostěrnu udělal, jaký to byl pocit? Úžasný, úžasný, ale uh, sorry, že já jsem jakože mal v pláně spravit nějakou 10 sekundovku jako vždy, ale uh, poslední dva zápasy, když jsem se o to snažil, tak to vůbec nevyšlo. Tak jsem si povedal prostě, že ukvodním se, počkám na jeho chybu, nebudem se nikam ponáhovat, bude to druhé, třetí kolo, je mi to jedno prostě, ale už nejdem robit žádné také, že do, do 15 sekund si povím, že ukončím, nebo... Sám jsem si vyvolal, spravil takovou slučku okolo krku. Nám to vůbec nevadí. Mahmuradov tamhle sedí v první řadě, prohrál mu nějaký prachy, protože dal na první kolo do třetí minuty, ale to nevadí. Pojďme se podívat společně na velkou obrazovku, pustíme si to KO a proveď nás tím, jak ty si cítil ty svoje údery. O, čakal jsem, povedal mi Pejo v rohu, že aby som išel s dvihákom, že aby som nezačínal s zadným hákom, ale že tím, že mám podlíza, že tam padne zdvihák a ten první zdvihák ho aj chytil. A potom už klasicky načepa, len ho dokončiť. Klasicky načepa, připravoval si se s vlastním čepem? Uh, nie, nie, posledný trénink v diete som mal s ním, lebo prišiel k nám do zvolna, tak len nejaké veci mi na něho povedal, že robí vysoký takedown a tak ďalej, tak ďalej, tak akože nejaké figle mi na něho povedal. Hrozilo ti ta třetí porážka, co v MMA tři porážky v řadě by bylo hodně nepříjemné, teď si ale zpátky na té zelené vítězné vlně. Je nějaké jméno, které by si proti sobě příště rád viděl? Hmm. A nebudem to rozprávať, nebudem to rozprávať, lebo to tu rozpráva každý, ale uh, koho ponúknete, tak vieš, ako je to. OK, tak vezmeš. Děkujeme moc, vítěz dnešního večera, Marek Mazuch. We saw just what a powerhouse Mazuch is. Non Andrej Novotný first boasted Marek that Mazuch, Mazuch with... actually smiled at him with teeth and then he joked about how uncontrollable display of emotions that was. Mazuk's answered that he has manners, but as he was egged on by Andre, he even jumped on the fence. As for his strategy, he said that he wanted to finish in first 10 seconds, but that didn't work two last times, so this round he wanted to stay calm and take it easy. Walking us through the replay, he said that he wanted to go for the uppercut and then finish him a la Chepo. As for Chepo, he was asked if he trained with him, he didn't, but Chepo did share some tricks with him. He, Mazu, almost faced three loose streak, but fortunately today he got a win. And as for who's going, who he's going to fight next, whoever. A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quickenden. This is the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shem Rock. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous... This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. 
and the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it! Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester.